Hello everyone, this is Professor Vigneron, and today I will be talking about the basic concept of the pricing methods. So pricing is one of the four P's with product, place, and promotion. It's actually the only P that does not cost anything in the sense that you don't have to spend money to uh, generate the pricing. The pricing is an internal decision that is based on some parameters. The concept of pricing and the method of defining what's the price, or what the price should be, is based on the minimum price would be the minimum being the cost, and the absolute maximum will be the maximum that you can sell the product based on the maximum value that people would perceive the price to be. So this maximum value is, is very dependent on the supply and demand, and the, the more there's people wanting a product and less a product available, the higher the perceived value it would be. So as a business, it's always very important to create the need before you define and you promote a price. So this price is very much a function of the situation of internal situation of the business, such as what, in what situation you are. Is this a product that you have excess right now? And are you in a stable financial situation? Um, are you going to try to survive and therefore the decision of the price you're going to have is very dependent on this. Do you have some competitors, many competitors? Uh, how are the prices of your competitors? All of this is very, very important. Are you trying to gain market share? Are you trying to increase your uh, prices? Are you trying to change people's perceived value and perceived quality of your product? Um, are you functioning in a way that you want to increase your profit as well? So all of these different reasons internally will influence on what kind of methods of pricing that you will use. When you're looking at uh, what's affecting the prices is you have obviously the costs. The costs are divided in two types of costs, the fixed cost and the variable cost. The fixed cost are what does not change with the amount of product that you are producing. So, um, the, you're producing one product or you're producing a thousand product, that fixed cost stays the same. So the rent, um, the salaries, all of these will stay the same. However, the more you produce, the more inventory you're going to have to get, the more raw material you will have to get, and that will be fluctuating. This is called the variable cost. The total cost is therefore the addition, the sum of the variable and the fixed cost. They are consideration that goes again and in hand with the question of quantity, which is the economies of scale, uh, which is related to the fact that the more you will produce, the more uh, inventory you will produce, the lower the cost of each one of these inventory, because essentially you are buying a larger quantity and you're getting discount um, for the raw material that you're buying. But at the same time also is you're reducing the cost of each one of the goods by um, uh, reducing the weight, the overall weight, the percentage proportion weight of your fixed cost by having a larger purchases and larger production. The experience curve is different in the sense that with more experiences, you become better at producing. So if you have, uh, if you're starting a business and you don't have much experience, you make uh, mistakes that eventually you learn from and you become better at doing it. If people are more trained, if people are more used to work with each other, is there is some kind of experience curve that happens and therefore you become more efficient. Um, if you have more uh, of older people that have worked in this company as they become more efficient and they are not in the learning curve to uh, find out how to do it and there's more um, routines and uh, quality controls uh, with these people than the people that are just starting but you have to spend time training. So, and a very important example is the use of uh, junior salespeople versus the use of um, uh, more experienced salespeople who will be going to the essential much faster and they will uh, cut corners and be more efficient in making their sales because they have developed a relationship with the uh, distribution network with the clients and therefore they would have more uh, of the, a relation that allows them to understand the needs of the clients and also to understand how to communicate and when to communicate with these clients because they know what to do. If you are someone who's just starting, you'll be making a lot of mistakes at the beginning and it will take time for you to build this relationship. So the, 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 the more you have experienced people working in your company, the, the more experience curve and the more efficient you will be 
at uh, building and uh, creating products. You also have a, another function of the quantity, which is um, the, um, the price in terms of quantity is the more the price change as being lower, um, the more you usually have an increase of demand. And so this is called the elasticity of the demand, is the change of the demand changes with the prices and the lower the price, the more people are um, buying the product. Other consideration is the fact that you have to understand that as a business, you will try to maximize your profits, you will try to increase the price, but as a consumer, the perception is you want to maximize your value, which is you want to maximize the, what you can get, the benefit, and the lower the price that you can get. So what are the, the four methods of uh, calculating a price? The first one, which is the simplest one, is the cost-based pricing, which is essentially using a markup in order to define what is the price. So you have the costs, and to simplify is you multiply the cost by the percentage that you, of markup that you want to apply to this product. So if you have um, a product that's cost, costing a, a dollar and you want a 20% markup, is you will multiply this dollar by 20% and, and, and if it's $2 and if it's $50, everything gets multiplied by 20%. This is the simplest one. It's a very much uh, a method of someone who is in uh, accounting. Um, however, it's, it's so simplistic that you may be missing some opportunities. The next one, the break-even, is the method that is more, um, favored by people that are more into finance because in this situation is look, you're looking at some kind of profit that you want to make and in terms of percentage of profit margin but also in terms of the amount of profit that you want to make and this is the method that is most appropriate when you have investors or when you're trying to get investors so the investor is going to invest a certain amount of money and they want to know when they will make a return on their investment you can actually through a graph measure the amount of um, based on their in, in investment, the projection of the type of, of the amount of product uh, that, that they would have to, the company would have to sell. And based on this projection of the amount of products is when they will make a return. And then you can make some um, fine uh, changes to see if they, they could be making a faster return by selling more products with a better uh, investment or greater investment. So the graph is really showing the break-even point, which is that when with the, the, the number of units being produced, when will you be making, starting to make a profit? And then as the number of products being sold, you will see that the profit will keep on growing. And all of this can be sort of looking at what's realistic based on the investment, based on the company's resources, based, based on the past performance, based on some uh, market indicators, what is most likely to happen. Obviously, this is not um, a pure science. It's all based on projection, but it is mathematically um, const constructed and it offers more of an um, objective, a more objective, it's not 100% objective, but more objective view of what's the likelihood of uh, the investor to get a return on their investment. This is a very common technique used in uh, the program called Shark Tank. And this is very important to uh, understand that this is a very powerful uh, way to, uh, to discuss um, a business with investors and also to look at it uh, yourself, making projections when you're making plans of the, the best this strategic decision and the best activities uh, to run in your business in order to reach this profit as soon as possible. Value-based pricing is a method that this time is not looking at the, uh, the internally or looking at externally looking at investors. It's looking at externally uh, to the most um, important uh, person in, in the market, which is the consumer. And it's looking at what are the benefits that the consumer will get from buying this product and what are the perceived benefits that they would get. And you will try to um, analyze these perceptions and see the value of these perceptions and put it in terms of how, how much uh, just noticeable difference there would be, how much uh, improvements, uh, innovation this product would have, and this compared to what's existing at the time on your competitor's product. So you make the point that the, the more you are unique, the more you're differentiated, and the more this is needed by the consumer, and the more they perceive that this is better, the higher you will be able to create a price which is higher. So. In contrast, 
you can see that the cost-based pricing goes from uh, looking at the product and then looking at the costs and adding a, a, a markup, you can define what will be the price for the customers, which versus the value-based pricing is actually starting from the customers. And these are the customers that define what the price is. So the danger with the cost-based pricing is that you sell it uh, too low and you could have sold it for much more. The danger with the um, value-based pricing is that you will actually sell it more than what the customer wants. So you have to make sure um, that you're not just adding a percentage and this percentage is just seems reasonable. It's always reasonable if it's something that makes sense to the customers. Competition-based pricing is this time uh, looking at something totally different, is looking at what your competitors are doing and imagining that based on what your competitors are doing, you have um, a chance to also be successful. So it is so, somewhat dan dangerous in the sense that the competitors may have uh, different costs and therefore you may be making uh, no money by following what the competitors do. Another danger is the com competitors may be making a mistake where they are not analyzing well or they're missing an opportunity to maximize the perceived value and the consumers are actually able to buy for much more than what the competitor sells. So it is oftentimes done when there is um, uh, a strategy which consists at competing uh, against someone very specific and that's the strategy. It's a challenger uh, strategy or it's a follower type of strategy. It's a, or it's supposedly um, a competitor type of strategy. It can also be used because you can actually use all of these methods in order to define your prices. And I think that's my recommendation. Uh, all of these methods have pros and cons and therefore using what, more than one method really improved the chances of you developing a good price. So to take away is that there are internal and external factors to determine what um, method you should be using based on your resources and, and uh, the situation of your company in the market. There are four general uh, approaches to setting the price, the cost-based pricing, the break-even pricing, the value-based pricing, and looking at your competitors' price, prices. And again, I think the, the, if there was one that only that you were uh, gonna use, that, was, that would not be good, but if there was only just one and you were forced to use one, um, to the simple question which is, which one is the best? If there was one that is the best, I would say is the value-based pricing, but it requires some very good research and you have to be very confident in the research that you're getting because you could be making some mistakes. And that's why I think the best combination is to start from the value-based pricing and then use the other one to uh, have additional uh, research and projections to see um, and adjust the value-based pricing based on the overall strategy of the company and the long-term vision of how your prices will affect. Because Pricing have a direct uh, incident on people's perception of the quality of your products. So you also want to make sure that you don't want to start uh, using a method and changing your methods and changing your pricing all the time. Changing your pricing all the time, if it's within the promotion, um, promotion program, it's okay. But if it's changing your prices all the time because you keep changing the methods and you, uh, you change uh, your pricing because you have a different view, strategic vision of what are your price is too often, that's when it's very confusing for the customers. And not only for the customers, but it's gonna be confusing for your channel of distribution, which are not gonna to like to support this kind of businesses that are changing their prices on pricing all the time. This concludes my presentation, bye-bye.